All right, welcome back guys to another video. Today, what we're gonna be talking about is programmatic UI. So I'm gonna go through every single thing there is to do with programmatic UI. Uh, so how to set up your project, how to set up, basically just everything. So before we get started, if building an app is too hard for you, check out my freelance link in the description. And with that all of the way, let's get started. So the first thing we're gonna do is create a new Xcode project. Now it's an iOS app and you can call it whatever you want. I'll call it auto layout tutorial. So let's expand this a little bit. So the first thing that you have is you have a main storyboard already set up <clears throat> when you set this up. And by the way, you should do storyboard in the previous section, I forgot that. But um, so the first thing you have is a main storyboard. So what we're gonna do, we're just gonna delete it. We're gonna leave the launch screen. I can go into that in another video. I've actually never changed it, but I'm sure there's a way and I can figure it out. But anyways, so we've deleted the main storyboard. We're now gonna click up here on our project under targets. We're gonna go to info and we're gonna, we're gonna have two places we need to delete the storyboard. Right here, we have main story, main storyboard, file base name, uh, the value is main, so just hit Dell on your computer, delete, backspace might work. So the next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna go under application scene manifest, we have to open it up, then we go to scene configuration, we open that up, application session role, we open that up, item zero, open that up, and here we have storyboard name main, so we can just delete that, and then we're good. So if you look here in the deployment info, this main interface should be gone. So we're gonna go into our scene delegate. Now this is where we set up the view controller that we want. So we have this uh, view controller, automatic one. So let's just, in the view to the load, let's say self.view.backgroundcolor equals dot system blue. And that way, if we set this up, it'll be a blue view controller, so we'll know it's working. So now going back into the scene delegate, we have all this code here and we can delete all these comments. And as you can see, we have this guard let underscore equals scene as UI window scene. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna use this. We're gonna remove the underscore and we're gonna say window scene. Compile it, shouldn't have any errors. So then we're gonna make the UI window. So you see how we have this UI window property up here? We're gonna say in this scene function, let window equals UI window, okay? And then we want the constructor with a window scene. We're gonna pass in the window scene. Now this window, UI window is where we're gonna set our view controller. So we're gonna say window dot view controller or it's a uh, root view controller equals and then we're going to create the view controller okay so set it equal to the view controller with a constructor so then we have this window up here so we're going to say self dot window equals window so we're setting this window up here equal to the window we created here and then we're going to say self dot window dot make key and visible Okay, and there's an optional right there. And now if we run that, we need to select a simulator and we can run that and we will get our blue view controller. Okay, so I got my blue view controller. So let's go into that view controller class. Now, I'm going to keep this simple to start out. Let's make a button and we can get rid of the self.view.background so it'll just be white. So let's start out, let's just make a button. Let's say let button equals UI button, and then have a constructor on that. Now, this is obviously your button. We can do button dot background color equals, we'll make it dot system blue. Make sure it's not the same as the background. Then we can say button dot set title, and we can give it a title, my button for dot normal. So now we have a UI component. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna say self.view. So this view controller is a view. 
dot add sub view button. So there are two ways to add this view now to set the constraints and show it on the screen. So there's two ways. There's frames and there's auto layout. Now auto layout is definitely more popular. Most people recommend it. Um, I think that frames can work if you do it right, but for some reason everyone just hates on them. I don't think they're that bad, but I do use auto layout. But first, I think I'm just going to show you the frames. So we're going to say button dot frame equals CG rect uh, with a constructor and this x y width and height. So this is the x coordinate, this is the y coordinate, the width and the height. So let's just say 100 for the x coordinate, 100 for the y coordinate, or we can do like 300. And the width, um, let's make it 120 and the height 44. So let's run that and we should have our button. So as you can see here, we have our button. Now, there definitely are some issues with this, like you're gonna have to calculate the middle of the screen if you want it in the middle of the screen uh, and like width and height and all that. And it's definitely not as easy to get right. You have to do a little bit of math. So let's take a look at auto layout. So the first thing we need to do, so we delete that button.frame. The first thing we need to do is set that button. We're gonna say button.translates auto resizing mask into constraints. We're gonna set that equal to false. So the next thing we need to do is set the constraints. Now there's two ways to do this. I'm gonna show you um, the first way. We're gonna say ns layout constraint dot activate. And this passes in an array. So you need to do square brackets. We're gonna enter. Um, so what we're going to say is button dot height anchor, or actually we'll say this, we'll say button dot center X anchor dot constraint equal to self dot view dot center X anchor. Okay. Now do a comma. We're going to copy and paste that. We're going to change the next one to center Y anchor and then self dot view dot center Y anchor. So now we need to set the height constraint. So we're going to say button dot height anchor dot constraint equal to, and we can set it uh, relative to the view. So we could say uh, equal to self dot view dot uh, height anchor uh, multiplier like 0 0.1, but you wouldn't do that. For this, you're going to do constraint equal to constant. And for the height anchor, we're going to make it 44. We're going to do a comma, copy and paste that change this to width anchor and we'll make the width anchor 120. So now this should, if we run this, this should be in the middle of the screen. And it is, and if we flip our device, oops, it will stay in the middle of the screen. So that's why auto layout is nice because it's pretty easy to get right. Now, if you did not want to use this NS Layout Activate for whatever reason, what you can also do, I'm going to copy and paste the center X anchor. What you can also do is you can say button dot center X anchor dot constraint equal to self dot view dot center X anchor dot is active equals true. Okay. And that will work as well. But in this uh, activate thing, you don't. Uh, block code you don't need to set this equal to true but yeah okay this is post-production code bra here and i think that i should show you some more constraints so we have center x center y width and height anchor what if we wanted to make this button take up the whole screen for whatever reason we wouldn't but maybe we would for a table view and it's the exact same thing so we're going to say button dot top anchor dot constraint equal to self dot view dot top anchor. Okay, we can put a uh, comma after that, copy and paste that. So we have it four times. I'm just gonna delete these ones from before. I'm gonna say the next one, we're gonna say bottom anchor, bottom anchor. We're gonna say leading anchor, then change this to leading anchor, and then trailing anchor, trailing anchor. 
Okay, so this is the other constraints you would use. Here we have our button. It is now the full screen. You will see this uh, navigation push later on in the video, but there's other things we can do. So as you can see, this button goes above this bezel here. Um, so what you can do, if you didn't want that, you could say self.view.layout margin guide, layout margin guide, and then run that, and then it'll push it down a little bit. It's this, it's kind of like the safe area that you're allowed. So as you can see, it pushes it down a little bit. What you could also do instead of that, we get rid of that. You can put a comment after self.view.top anchor. We can say constant and we can say, let's make it 60 uh, from the top. And for the bottom, you would do negative 60, I think. So let's do that as well. Comma, constant, negative 60. So as you can see, we have some spacing there. And yeah, that's about it. Um, I don't know if I went through this, but on like a width anchor, you can do a multiplier. So like the multiplier of the full screen or whatever. So as you can see, we have a bit of spacing on both the top and bottom, but yeah, I think that's it. You can also do, there's also a multiplier. Um, let's see, let's see if we can get that. Let's grab one of them and do that. Um, so we have equal to, equal to constant. We have multiplier equal to uh, system spacing below. We have greater than or equal to. So you can mess around with all of these, but the main thing that I think you need to know is you have the top, bottom, leading, trailing, width, height, center X, center Y, and that should be enough. Uh, constraints might be all of them, not sure, but yeah. Now, what if you wanted to reference this button? And let me go back so I can have this all in, activate. What if you want to reference this button outside of this view did load uh, block? Basically, you can set global properties um, and I'm going to show you how to do this. We're going to say private let button colon UI button equals curly braces. Outside of the curly braces, we're going to do a parenthesis, open and close bracket. Now, what we're going to do, we can first off, we're going to say let button inside these curly braces, let button equals UI button with a constructor and then return button. Now what we can do is say uh, button dot set title and we can say my button for dot normal. And then we can also say button dot background color equals dot system blue. Okay, so we're gonna delete in the view to load this button stuff and then we can run it and it'll work just the same. So there we go. So that is traditionally how you would set up um, UI components uh, with programmatic UI. So I guess there's one more thing that I'll show, and I guess like with storyboards, you would do this differently. So I'm gonna show you how to navigate to new view controllers. So we're gonna make a new file. We're gonna call this, we're gonna make it a Cocoa Touch file. We're gonna make a subclass of UI view controller. And we're gonna say second view controller for its title. So next, create. So we have second view controller. Let's delete these comments and let's just make the background self dot view dot background color equals to dot system purple. Now, if we go back into our first view controller, let's use this button to navigate to the view controller. So in, <clears throat> you can do this in different places. I usually do this in the view to the load. I will put this UI setup code into a setup UI function. And then in the view to the load, I will say button dot add target self. Uh, so target self action hashtag selector did tap button and then four dot uh, touch up inside. Okay, so now we need to make this uh, button. So we're gonna say at Objective-C func did tap button and there we go. So now this will run every time we press our button. 
So what we're gonna say to show the next view controller, we're gonna say let VC equals second view controller. So we're just instantiating the view controller. And then what we can say is self.present, self.present this uh, function. So we're gonna pass in the VC, animated is true, completion, um, nil. And then we can run that and now it's going to show this modally. So it's gonna pop up. So if we press our button, it pulls up this, uh, this uh, view controller. So similarly, if you're in a navigation controller, you could say self dot navigation controller dot, uh, what is it? Push, push view controller. So self dot navigation controller dot push view controller, pass in the VC, animated is true. And we can get rid of this self dot present and then we'll hop back into the scene delegate and we'll just embed this view controller. We'll cut view controller. We'll say UI navigation controller, constructor root view controller, pass that view controller in and then run it. So now you'll have a UI navigation controller and you can press the button and it will take us to the next view controller. So I think that's all I have. It's really not that bad. And honestly, um, storyboards at this point, I don't even remember how to use them very well. Um, and you'll just get used to UI uh, programmatic. So uh, if this video helped, please click like. If you have any questions, please leave a comment. If you want more Swift videos, please click subscribe. And if you need help building an app, then please click my freelance link in the description. Thanks for watching. Peace.